Thank you. We are now joined by Dante Ramos, a columnist for the Boston Globe and an expert, we'll say, on the roller coaster <laughs> that is the MBTA. Dante, tell us a little bit about how the handling of the MBTA has gone up to this point, in your opinion. Uh, I think the T is probably doing about as well operationally as you could expect, given the enormity of our weather and the age of their equipment. The weather that we've had is like a slow motion natural disaster. And the equipment that they have is older than any person in this room. Mm -hmm. And you put those two things together and it makes it, uh, it it's, it's unfortunate but not terribly surprising that the breakdowns that we've seen um, have been as bad as they were. Right, and you said they're sort of doing the best that they can, but do you think that the particular uh, schedule changes and shutdowns that they've done have been effective? I think it depends upon what you mean by effective. For being able to clear off tracks and clean off bus stops and things like that, it's probably bought them a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. For people who are relying on the MBTA to get into work, it obviously doesn't feel like it's effective. It feels like a total disaster, which for employers and for a lot of workers, that's what it's been. Right. In terms of we recently, Beverly Scott resigned, er, resigned from the MBTA. How has that sort of affected the top of the system and of the leadership? It's interesting. She is in it, she's a very outspoken character who uh, has channeled a lot of the frustrations of MBTA riders. And so she's become a galvanizing figure. She's not from the Boston area. She's uh, most recently from Atlanta and has this very southern tell it like it is kind of charm about her. So mm -hmm. she is resigning, but not until I believe it's uh, effective in April. So it's not affecting things exactly on a day to day basis. And she's still minding the store. I will say that she and the new administration, she was chosen by the former, uh, the former Patrick administration. It, you wouldn't expect that she would stay around. The fact that she is leaving earlier than a lot of people thought requires the new administration of Governor Baker probably to take more responsibility and to invest uh, at least emotionally in getting the MBTA back on track in a way that they probably weren't at the beginning. Well, looking even further into the future, what do you think this winter has said uh, with regards to Boston and transportation with the potential of hosting the Olympics? It's a really great question. And you talk to people around town, and there's basically two points of view about it. One is that the MBTA, with all of its old equipment, we couldn't possibly handle the, the Olympics. And it just goes to show that this whole Olympics idea is a fool, fool's errand. The other line of thinking about it is that this could be an occasion to force the po policymakers in the state, the powers that be, to come to a sort of reckoning with the MBTA and update all the equipment that needs to be updated and uh, get it into shape to move a lot of people around in 2024. I think the truth is probably somewhere in between, and I don't think we yet know how people will end up responding to this, except in the short run of a couple of weeks. The long run's a little more up in question. Well, as far as making updates to the system, mm. do you have any idea where that money could come from? Again, it's a really great question. There's been some suggestions. I wrote written about how the towns that are supported by, the, or that are served by the MBTA should maybe pony up a little bit of money uh, for it. Um, there's certainly been the suggestions that there are inefficiencies in the MBTA's operations, and if you tackled some of those, that would free up some money also. But it, it's, it's important to remember that these are problems that no small steps will fix. Train cars are very expensive. The lead time on getting new train cars is, takes years, and the MBTA's recent efforts to get new locomotives and train cars for commuter rail has ended up taking a lot longer than people expected. So I don't think the amount of money that will be involved will be small, and if the, but uh, unless plans are made soon, I think we'll probably end up seeing these sort of disasters repeat as opposed to being fixed in the future. Right, right. Definitely. In terms of there's more cars on the road as well with less people taking the T. How do you think that's affected not just Bostonians, but everybody driving around traffic wise and all of that? There's always been a, a little bit of resentment among some drivers in the Boston area about the attention paid to the MBTA and the money that goes to the MBTA. There are some people who feel like, well, I'm not using it. So why am I subsidizing it? Public transit always requires a public subsidy. I think we've seen the evidence in these last few weeks of why. 
there are a lot of snow banks, the lanes are restricted, and there's a lot of people who are out on the roads. And so traffic has been grinding in all parts of the city. And you try to get from one place to another in a car, and it, in something that ought to take maybe 10, 15 minutes could easily take you an hour. And that's the proof in my own eyes that you need a good working public transit system because it avoids the sort of problems that we've seen. Right. Well, for the sake of all Bostonians, mm -hmm. I hope that the system is fully functioning, hopefully mm -hmm. sometime soon. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us, Sanjay. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs>